where the hell am I? Phil Philadelphia, city of brotherly love, or some crap? Today, I'm going to talk about a comparison of two stories. I guess I should give a spoiler warning, but like, these, there's no way this is a story you've never heard before. There was once a species of mammals that broke off from their genus and formed their own thing. They developed opposable thumbs, they, by means of being smarter or better or chosen by some kind of deity, they ended up as the only homos left on Earth. They learned to mass produce their resources by living near disease-ridden animals and these GMO-ass plants and overall making their quality of life relatively worse. They started to worship things, they built houses, they built cathedrals, they built pyramids, they built walls and made Mexico pay for them. They waged wars and they did conquest and they invented phones and they invented the internet and now they're watching my illiterate ass run through Philadelphia yelling about books like a crazy person. That's right, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about humans and humanity, a brief history of how we fucked it all up, and Sapiens, a brief history of mankind by British journalist Tom Phillips and Israeli historian Yuval Noah Harari, respectively, tell the same story. They're both non-fiction books, and while humanity presents more of a political discourse, and Sapiens explores it more from an anthropological standpoint, they're pretty much identical. So, I have two quotes, and let's see if you can identify which one is which. Unfortunately for the Neanderthals, just a few tens of thousands of years after our ancestors rolled up from across the sea, the blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, the Neanderthals and all of our relatives vanished from the face of the earth. In a pattern that would quickly establish itself throughout human history, as soon as we arrive, there goes the damn neighborhood. Exactly how and why we survived this while our cousins got the first train to Extinctionville is a subject of debate. Second quote. Walking upright has its downsides. The skeletons of our primate ancestors developed a support for a creature that walked on all fours and had a relatively small head. Adjusting to an upright position was quite a challenge, especially when the scaffolding had to support an extra large cranium. Of course, the first one's from humanity and how we fucked it all up. While both of these quotes are from the same story, why are they so different? It's because of the tone. It's the difference between talking to your anthropology professor and talking to your drunk buddies. The defining characteristic of almost any book is tone, but nonfiction especially, it's pretty much the only thing you have. I don't want to say completely that you have no character development, no plot, no world building, but a lot of that stuff is already there for you. You just have to dig to find it. Like an archaeologist. Yes, talking camera stand, like an archaeologist. Look at us using similes and shit like the geniuses we are. Tone is why nonfiction is literature. It's what separates it from essays, journalism, and encyclopedia entries. And despite what bookstores would have you believe, nonfiction is actually split into a ton of genres. And we all know what they are. We've all heard of memoirs and true crime and biographies. And both books fall into the nonfiction category of literary journalism. Despite being historical nonfiction, Humanity, A Brief History of How We Fucked It All Up is still a comedy. I mean, it's very rare that you see a book that has a censored title that is not a comedy. And although neither book had to write a plot, both still employ their narrative techniques. So we just came upon this really confusing roundabout thing, and I am skip. So I'm gonna cut to the next clip very awkwardly. So despite being nonfiction, they still employ the same narrative techniques that you would see in fiction, such as show, don't tell, and themes, and arc, and especially the narrative voice. It's pretty obvious in a book that's called A Brief History of How We Fucked It All Up that Tom Phillips has a very strong narrative voice. And you can tell because he's also an article writer for BuzzFeed. I'm actually currently reading his book, Truth, A Brief History of Total Bullshit. And I know that this isn't canon, but I really hope that that's book two in a trilogy. But anyway, Sapiens also employs a narrative arc as well. Harari's voice is incredibly strong, despite it reading like sort of an encyclopedia entry. 
obviously, Sapiens has a less comedic tone than humanity, but there's still a level of starkiness. There's still a lot of voice. And that being said, not gonna lie, when I first started reading it, it kind of read like a documentary. And after reading a fiction such as this one, it almost kind of lost my attention. But then it recaptured it by talking about something very, very important. It talked about running. Did you know that running is what we humans are supposed to do? We used to run down our prey until it passed out, and then we would like stab it and drain its blood. It was so cool. So what I'm doing right now is exactly what this body's evolved to be doing, to run and to think. It was super motivating. Like we are such special little creatures. That is where it kind of contrasts with humanity, surprisingly. Humanity tends to be a little bit more objective, whereas sapiens tends to be more subjective. And you would think that I have that backwards, but I don't. Sapiens use history to speculate as to how humans felt. What did they believe? Were they happy? Were they hydrated? Did they love running as much as I did? If we could travel back in time, could we take one of them and grab a beer with them, just like we would with any one of our friends? Humanity, on the other hand, despite being laden with Philip's opinions, it tends to be a lot more descriptive and succinct. Rather than compelling readers to look inside themselves and ask themselves questions about human nature, it instead just kind of asks us, us to consider where we fit in the story. Whereas Harari offers a point that implies that there's no such thing as human nature. We are literally wild animals left to our own devices so everything that we can possibly do is natural. Humanity, despite being fun and charming and witty, still doesn't ask us to ask these types of questions. Phillips kept bringing up a character, a real person actually, named Lucy. So our history isn't defined by the mistakes of big important people. Lucy is a homo erectus. Lucy was an Australopithecus, you illiterate fool that was completely unremarkable. It wasn't a politician. It wasn't a best-selling author. It probably had the same intelligence as a chimpanzee, but because it fell out of a tree and broke all its bones a million years ago, it changed our understanding of humanity forever. We all know the story. There was once this wet rock in the Milky Way galaxy called Earth. There were these carbon-based creatures on it that had extinctions, that had evolutions, and one of them evolved into these noisy, violent little assholes called primates. There are seven billion ways to tell this story. So thank you for joining me for mine. Bye.